Bow. What's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brandman Sean, and I'm back with another episode of Ask Brandman. This is the second episode, to be exact, where I answer questions that you guys ask in the comment section below. So make sure if you want a question to be answered, make sure you put it in the comment section. It will get answered at some point, hopefully. However, remember the one rule. The quality of the answers you receive is dictated by the quality of the questions you ask. So ask some good questions or some thoughtful questions is, is, is better than saying good questions. And before I get started, I want to say the goal is to drop these every single Wednesday. So be on the lookout for every single every single Wednesday for an episode like this. Engage. Let me know if it's keep uh, if it's worth doing, right? And we'll keep it rolling. It's the network. <laughs> Question number one, we're going to go ahead and check into it. So I saw that someone actually asked Corey, it was under one of his videos. He was like, thanks, I understand that much. I was more so asking which objectives are best for building an audience to retarget to and what audience size do you want to get before you start retargeting? For example, 50,000 views for a video and they viewed 75% of it or a certain number in in a reach campaign, etc. Let me break this down. So to be clear for anybody who doesn't understand, he's basically saying, yo, I want to big, uh, build a biggest audience as possible for me to be able to retarget. But I want to know the minimal sides that it actually makes sense to make the decision and what type of ad should I run on Facebook to make that happen. So I'll answer straightforward first. Number one, video view campaign. You actually answered it, right? 50,000 video views that's what you're looking that you use in your example and people watch 75 percent of it but let's break it down i'm just going to explain all the ad objectives and how we look at it at contra brand agency so look the primary ones you're going to see used are a video views all right you're going to see a traffic ad you're going to see a reach ad i know that might surprise some people and then you're also going to see conversion when it makes sense all right and the way these all get looked at this is 100 percent the primary one that gets used in terms of building up your audience right so yes the, the whole purpose if you look at this video views facebook, facebook is going to target the people based on how much they tend to watch all right they're looking for people who are most likely to view videos where the traffic ad are, are looking for people within an audience set that are most likely to click, right? And then over time, it gets more data. It's most likely to click on what you have, most likely to view what, what you created as well in terms of content. So to answer that question, video view ad is what you're going to use to build your audience. This is the leader where you're trying to get most people to experience your brand at the top of the funnel. And they, you don't want them to just see an ad. You want them to watch an ad the most of it possible. And then when we talk about the audience side, 50,000, look, man, you got it, right? Just be confident in what you're doing because that example, 50,000, you actually hit it on the head. That's pretty much where we start to look and say, all right, we can now retarget these people, right? Now, it's up to you based on the amount of money you have, how much you can actually stand to do. You might not have enough money um, to, to do a 50,000. I'm in a 50,000 view video view ad, or you might not have enough, uh, or your ad cost might be way too high, which again leads back to not enough money. But 50,000 views, 75% is what we look at. But you can do 50%. Um, percent. I play with it at times. Where sometimes I even do 25%. But if you want the thing, if you want people who are most likely right to react well to the retarget, of course you're going to go to the people who have viewed the most. So 50,000 views at 75%. And I'm going to go through these as well while we're here, right? Traffic ads, again, that's people who are most likely to click, right? Reach ads, and, and when we're, what we're doing when we do these is we're trying to get as many people to go ahead and click through, not just for costs, right? We might not have time to do a video view. We look at video view as building our awareness, building our audience, and setting people up for the future, but sometimes we have a campaign where, look, we don't have the money on this campaign, or we have a goal that we have to hit 
that we can't wait. So we need to just make sure we get the clicks over to that next point. We need them to click over into the toned in page so they can go ahead and see that and then go straight to Spotify. We need them to click over onto the, the uh, merch page and then go ahead and buy the merch because I don't have a budget to do video views first or I don't have a timeline to do video views first. All, right, all those things are important, but it's also why it's relevant to make sure you're doing video views as often as possible. All right. So in building up that audience or you're just building up an audience from your natural posting. So then we can simply do traffic ads that are retargeting based on the people who already have an experience with your campaign versus cold traffic ads. We always like to do warm traffic ads if we can, but we're not opposed to doing um, a, a cold traffic ad reach. Now, these things do get used. I know a lot of people don't talk about them or they say stay away from them. The primary uh, way to think about not using reach is don't look use reach for cold audiences. That's really the rule, right? Because then it does become a waste of money. However, there are times when you have a base, right? You already have people who have liked your, fa your Facebook page or liked your Instagram page or been a part of that experience. And you just want them to see that you came out with something. You might be following up with a traffic ad, but a reach ad because it's not thinking as much, right? It's not saying who is most likely to, to uh, click, who is most likely to do a video view. It's just saying, yo, here's the audience. I'm going to show it to everybody. That's basically what a reach ad is, um, is doing. So it's cheaper to get that, uh, that message out to all those people, especially with your retargeting. The only thing to consider, again, is it's strategic and it's not what you're going to use most often. But let's just say you have a PR moment happen, right? Oh, hey, you want everybody to know? You don't necessarily need them to click, but you just want to get in their mind subtly. Hey, let them know. Bam. Reach ad. Hit all everybody in the audience. Don't have too many expectations. So that's a different part of the marketing budget. It's not where most people are looking for because most people are looking for building fans straightforward and not really at the point where they can worry, be concerned about the additional um, awareness things and building a relationship on top and nurturing that. But you can reach ads is kind of like lead, nur not lead nurturing. Reach ads are kind of like nurturing your fan base all within the ads versus through an email campaign or something like that. All right. Now, conversion. Conversion requires a certain amount of activity and it needs that activity within a certain window. You can have it in a one day window, or you can have it within a seven day window, but you need 50 conversions within a certain period of time um, to actually be able to, to get the data that you need for the conversion ad to begin really working because conversion ads are down the funnel. You need these things to happen because you can have good click-throughs on video view ads, by the way. We've had tra uh, traffic ad click-throughs that have been as low as, low as uh, I mean, video view click-throughs that have been as low as traffic ads. But the whole thing is until you get enough data from, hey, they clicked over to my toned-in page, they clicked over to my, um, my merch page, or enough people have viewed this page, until you have enough of that, the conversion ad isn't really going to do anything for you. So most people are here at this starting point, again, especially when we're talking about building a fan base from scratch. That's how we look at those ad objectives. Wanted to run through that really quickly, but let's go ahead and get into question number two. So Sodoku Raiden said, should you make your own YouTube account if you release through a distributor or, or just let them do it? I asked because the distributor doesn't show you as an actual account, just a topic, which is harder to find. You need to have your own YouTube account. It's a ridiculous idea not to. I see too many artists um, miss out on opportunities to take advantage of YouTube because it's all only controlled by a distributor. So I'm going to go through a lot of real scenarios that, that happen. Right? We've had many accounts working with artists with labels and we want to put certain content out, but they can't put certain content out because they only have a distributor page. So they can't do that organic, regular fan base building content where, hey, this is just me behind the scenes on the tour, or this is just me having fun and me being more of the influencer type and building off of my personality or showing in-depth parts of my experience or, or whatever message I'm trying to get out. You don't really get to do all of that on the distributor page. Also, that money, right? isn't as accessible. You don't have that direct to you YouTube money where, especially if you're on a label, they're taking their cut of that. And, you know, even if the label has access, I mean, they have control of all your music at the time, 
right, which isn't completely normal these days, at least you can make money off of just your regular brand building stuff that the label has nothing to do with. So that's one thing that you also have to consider. And then on top of that, right, you don't get the data. That's one of the, the most annoying parts of working with artists who only have distributed accounts, especially when they're controlled by labels or done through Vivo or something like that. They literally don't even know their own data or if they want to see their own data, they got to go check through somebody else. All right. It's just it's just too time consuming. Um, and you're putting yourself in the dark on a platform, YouTube, where you don't have to be. So have your own account, not just the distributed account. Even if we're not talking about a label situation where you did it indie style, it's nice to have that topic, um, you know, YouTube video scenario for what it is and some of the licensing and all those things. But you need your own account because you are, if we're talking about independence, you are most independent on your own YouTube page that is just your brand. You control it. You do all uploads. Everything is just direct to you. The data, 100%. It's a headache, 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 right? For any artist who has a label, right? It's a headache to have to work in that situation where you only have a YouTube page controlled by them, but it's also, it's, it's also a crime, right? For you not to have your own YouTube page. You, you, you got to do it. So I'll leave it at that. Um, and then King Baba James said, what's the amount to start for start Facebook ads for indie artists? Well, however much you got, man. Like literally when it comes to Facebook ads, especially $5 a day. I, we always like me and Corey always talk about $5 a day, but shoot, you can do two, three dollars a day. Facebook allows it to happen. As long as you got the credit card, you can run the ad. That's all you need. Right. Because at the beginning, we're only talking about gathering data anyway. When you get into very specific questions, we talk about the quality of the questions dictates the quality of the answers. Right. If you have a different question and you want more specific detail because, hey, I'm at this milestone and I'm trying to get my ad to scale or to get this many views on my song and have X, Y, Z happen. That's a different answer. But if you're just talking about, yo, to start a Facebook ad, however much money you can, five dollars a day is nice. And at the beginning, anyway, whoever's running it, you're only looking to collect data, right? You're trying to get data to know if I should scale this song or if this is the right ad. So start with a little bit of money. Even the big people who have massive budgets, they start with a little bit of money, right? Relative to their budget, if they need to test fast. But so many people are still only doing $10, $15 a day. We're working 10000 you know, plus budgets where, hey, look, we're running still a $10 a day, ad, a day ad at first. Everybody has to start there. So that's the answer to that question, King Baba. But good question, because I know a lot of people do still have that that question, right? And then StatFlow says, how should an artist with no established fan base get unbiased feedback on their music? All right, so there's a lot of different ways to answer this question. Um like one go out in the streets right you could just ask people what do you think about this music or you can have your friend show your other friends the music not have your friend show your other friends you can have some of your friends say hey go show some other people this music don't tell them who it is right um or they might not even know who you are and then let them report back to you with feedback your little sister your mama your, your daddy like just just have other people go get feedback for you if you need to pay them you know you probably shouldn't have to but but if you need to pay them to do that then do it but also here's something that everybody can do all right now this is a challenge i want somebody to do this and report back to me trust me i will feature you if you, if you do this i'm looking for people to, to actually do this which i call the five dollar ad feedback challenge and it doesn't have to stay at five dollars but this is where we start right create an ad on facebook you have your music put in the ads. You can have a meme caption that says looking for feedback in your meme caption and it's playing the song in the actual ad. Maybe you have a little video clip or something interesting and then just be straightforward and honest in your caption. Say, hey, I'm looking for feedback. Would love if you give me you know, feedback on a 30 second or 60 second clip of if you like this music or not. Please be honest. This is a part of my development, right? You don't have to use those exact words, but be straightforward, right? And then run an ad for $5 to see how people react. Now, the thing is, you probably still want to do some testing to just see 
which ones are getting the better, the most engagement, right? Um, and this is something that you might add. You might add an engagement ad in this in this scenario, right? I'm not gonna. Well, I don't write the whole word out, right? You might add an engagement ad for this particular type of scenario. Right? An engagement ad and a traffic ad will be the two that I would test. Um, no, an engagement ad and a video view that uh, view ad will be the two that I test and see how those are responding because you do need to still test which one's getting me the most feedback, the best feedback within a certain amount of views and for a certain amount of money. Test both of those things. And no, yes, ex you know what? Yeah, I I'm serious. Run this challenge. Anybody who does this challenge, DM me, right? DM me that you did the challenge. I'll give it at least three weeks after whenever this video posts. I'm hoping that somebody does it and we'll, I'll start collecting, getting feedback of what happened with people, let some more people know what exactly happened and maybe even talk to some of y'all about the feedback and have y'all on, on, on the show, however we run it. But try this challenge, post a song, I encourage that probably having a meme caption, right? That means the video, but then the, the, the caption at the top of the video within the, the content that says looking for feedback or need your feedback. Um, listen to this, something like that. That's to letting them know, hey, check this out. Right. But then in the caption, right, straightforward, say, hey, I'm trying to figure out if my song is good or not. I'm an aspiring artist or something like that. Please be honest. Some type of language in that vein some people will have probably better copy than others but i guarantee y'all will get honest feedback because you don't know these people that you're running an ad with i always say an ad is the easiest way to get unbiased feedback are they clicking or not right you know what's happening with it but there's nothing better than also just straight up asking for the feedback right so then you might find out why people didn't click right and let's let's start there and um hmm let me think, let me think, let me think. Yeah, I'll leave it at that for now. I'll leave it at that for now. I was thinking about going to something else, but for the last question, I wanna, I see Dan said, all right, for the last question, I see Dan Sounds Beats said, bro, without a vision, you perish from a lack of direction. That's the same principle as having mentors. All right, so for y'all who haven't seen it, I did a video about vision. Should you have a vision? Do you need a vision? I'll put that in the description below and I'll make that pop up at the end of this video. But what he's referring to is the fact that I basically said that you don't need a vision at the very beginning. Sometimes you just have to commit to what you're doing, right? And be successful at what you're doing until you get a vision. Because what most people mess up is, I'm looking for my passion, right? I'm looking for that thing that's going to take. We have this whole thing, find your passion, find your passion. But the problem is, everybody's passion doesn't come immediately. Some people are born, they know it when, they, when they're fives. Some people don't find their passion to the 30, 40, 50, whatever that is. But my question for you is, when you find your passion, will you be in the position to take advantage of that passion, right? Because... Anything you do requires a certain discipline that's transferable to everything, a, a, a certain uh, wherewithal to keep going and to commit and continuously work through things, right? And whenever you find your passion, it's not going to be any different. It might be fun or something that you like, but if you haven't developed the skill set of success and just winning at things, completing things, when you find your passion, that shit's not going to matter. It just is what it is. And that's what most people mess up, waiting for this thing to happen to them in the universe. And what if, what if it never comes? Like, and that's a, that's a whole other thing. But, but if you're waiting for this other thing, right, or you're waiting for a vision to be casted upon you from, the, you know, the universe, that's, that's something that even if it happens, if you're not prepared to take advantage of it, you're not going to find what you, what you want in terms of the results, right? That's why you see so many people. They kill it at one thing and then they decide to do another thing and then they kill it at that. And then you might be more passionate about it, but they, nope, they beat you here and then they beat you here because it's a muscle, right? There's certain things that get developed when just operating on certain levels. So keep that part in mind. But to go a little deeper, because honestly, Dan sounds, you, you sound like, you know, you're, you're referring like the Bible, you know, Christian, Christianity, um, God, right? Without a vision, you perish. And to use a biblical example, we can look at Moses, right? Moses, 
there's like two stories that stand out. Moses has this one story where he's like upon the king and they have all these snakes. And if I remember correctly, you know, correct me all you, you know, super Bible heads. Um, there was, he didn't have a snake or he turned a snake, right? From like, he turned his staff into a snake, fought the snakes, beat them down, all that stuff, right? So he displayed miracle in that moment, but he had a staff. He didn't have a snake. The staff he had turned into a snake. The next scenario, he was leading the people, right? And they end up into this, at this river, this body of water. And then what happens? Well, he's trapped, can't go nowhere. And next thing you know, hits that staff down on the ground. And then the, the water parts, the Red Sea, all right? And what was used in both scenarios? His staff, all right? Now, I'm not saying it's a magical staff, powers, you know, however you want to interpret it, God just use this uh use put use himself through the staff however you want to look at it but in both scenarios the way i translate that to my life is use what is in your hands use what is right before you so when we talk about there's moments where you don't have a vision because stuff some, look, sometimes stuff gets hard that, that's not even practical where oh you always have to have a vision always have all like all these things that's not real life for most people where you run into these hard times where it is hard to see Shit is foggy, all right? And what I found personally that gets me through those moments is like, well, what did I have right now? I don't want to, I want to get there, and I keep, but it's not happening. What can I do right now to at least have forward progress? All right? If there's a wall in front of me and I can't see, I can't have a vision, but I can break down the, the wall, all right? I break down the wall, and, and now I, I can see, so maybe I can have a vision. And that's all I'm referring to in that video, Dan, all right? So focus on... Like, yes, if you have a vision, that is nice. But sometimes, even if you don't have a vision, right, it's an equally important to just commit to the thing that's right in front of you, working to, with the things that you have at the moment and getting through that until there's a moment where you can breathe, right, where you can begin to get these visions, right, and, and, and all that stuff. But Because that's, that's a luxury, honestly. A vision is a luxury, but it's not a, not a necessity to move forward. Right, a vision is where you thrive. So that's that's my answer uh, to that question, Dan. And I actually want to highlight a comment of the day, a comment of the day, because I was going through and I was like, look, hey, JM, the mellow man, he gets it. Facebook ads really does trigger the algorithm. It should, in fact, be the basis of your strategy. Playlist are somewhat optional. I want y'all to let that soak in. I want y'all to think about it. If y'all got a comment against that, something to say about it, put that in the comment section below. But for me, JM, the mellow man, that is the comment of the day. Once again, this is another episode, episode two of Ask Brand Man. Ask those questions in the comment section below and the quality of the answers you get are dictated on the quality of the questions you ask. If you don't know what to do, hit that subscribe button. Have a good one.